Hi everybody, this is Mary and Tricia from Daycare and today we're going to do a presentation on well-being. Good day everybody. Uh, today we thought we would look about maintaining our health and really about primary prevention, about preventing um, and maintaining good health. So I think the first aspect that we would look at today would be exercise. So Trish, we'll just go through a few of the basic chair exercises that we think would be beneficial for our health. Okay, so I'll just put away the glass there. So we'll, we'll start, if you're sitting in a chair, do a few arm swings, okay? So at the side of the chair, you can, you can be moving your hands up and down, you can crisscross them like this, uh, and back again, okay? So that all stimulates movement in your, your arms. You can do your, your legs, you can tap your legs up and down like that, okay? And heels to the ground, toes to the ground, or tapping up and down, okay? The twisting, twisting, twisting side, oh yeah, side to side. Yeah, just be, and just be careful, just do what within what, your what you can. safety. Up to about 60 seconds, you know, just a minute of each, and, and, and stop. Do these a few times every day, and it will help your circulation if you're, if you're sitting down. We consider one of the next important aspects of prevention is falls awareness, falls risk, and Trish, we will elaborate a little more on all of the preventative strategies we have to um, okay, prevent so falls. So to prevent falls, I suppose the, the first thing to, to remember is uh, good footwear, you know. Um, slippers can be, you know, you can fall out of slippers or they can be they not, wouldn't be the best uh, suitable footwear. So if you can wear your shoes, wear your shoes. The minute you get out of bed in the morning, put your shoes on. Don't, don't bother with slippers, because you can fall out of slippers. Um, good lighting, so that you can see where you're going. Any obstacles in your way, remove mats, remove anything out of your way. If you have a walker or a rollator, make sure you have chairs and all that. Declutter things, you know, if you have a hallway with a load of chairs or whatever, just just remove them all, okay? And, and have your, your, your straight walk so that you can, you, you've nothing in your way. Um, as I said, the lighting, make sure you have good light in the room. Um, and if you wear glasses, make sure you wear your glasses, okay? Um, for you to keep, you know, sometimes when you get up to go for a walk, you might feel a little bit dizzy, you know, take it, take it carefully. Don't, don't just jump up and, and walk. Uh, take, sit at the side of the bed, you know, get your bearings and then go walking. Um, if you are afraid of falling, always, you know, have an alarm on your hand and if you fall, make sure you press it, you know, or it can be on your, on your uh, hand. But wear the pendant alarm, you can, they, 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 they are provided by Westgate here, so if, none of it, if someone doesn't have one and you need one, we can provide one for you. But they're very important and very important to, to, to press them if you need it. Um, that leads me on then, Trish, to vital numbers. I was just wondering, do people actually know what the vital statistics of things like? What's your normal blood pressure? You mentioned there about be careful about yeah. when so you get when, when, Yeah, when you, your normal blood pressure is about 20 over 80, but sometimes if you can you know, take blood pressure tabs or something like that, or if you're lying down for a while, blood pressure could fall, so it could go down, you know, 100 over 60, might make you feel a little bit dizzy. So the normal should be 120, 80. Some people kind of high blood pressure then, and they're on medication for that. And then what's your blood sugar? I mean, that can also vary, can't it? And that usually, can also have an impact on balance. Usually, uh, well, between five and six. Usually, if it's, if it's six, it's, it's, it's okay, you know? Yes, and cholesterol, sure, that's very topical. Five. They're five. <laughs> the famous famous numbers. Numbers. They're, five. They're the famous numbers, aren't they? And that would lead you on then to the nutrition aspect of uh, health promotion. So we have the pyramid, and of course, what's the most important um, what? food types that we should be having to maintain a healthy diet? I suppose when, when we're talking about food, um, you know, I think as we get a little bit older, we don't eat the same as we did when we were a bit younger and we were active and moving around. So I think, you know, small meals, five small meals a day is what we should be eating really. With a little bit of fruit and veg, a little bit of uh, potatoes, rice, pasta, and things like that, milk and yogurts, uh, and for your protein, your egg, your fish, your meat. Um, and what kind of, what uh, problems can be associated with, with poor appetite? Poor appetite, eat little and often, as I said, every two hours maybe 
you know, have something small to eat. Avoid the long gaps because if you look, if, if if you have a long gap anyway, your blood pressure sugar can go down, then you can lead to all that dizziness and all that. So little and all is the most important thing. And drink plenty of fluids if you can. Um, if they recommend about six six to uh, yeah, six to eight cups, cups of clear fluids per day. day. Okay. And so, then and you look at other issues that might be preventing you enjoying your food, like a common occurrence is constipation. constipation. So what would we recommend? So um, you could um, take some prune juice, um, have your cereal in the morning, have your porridge, put a bit, bit of lap seed, lap lap seed. seeds on it. Um, you for know, roughage. For roughage. Uh, fruit and vegetables, yes, um, plenty of vegetables. Um, and if, if the constipation gets worse, you know, maybe you need to go to the doctor. There's loads of uh, things that the, the GP can prescribe now, like, that, that can help constipation. And another thing we come across on a re encounter is um, people complaining about reflux yeah. indigestion. and indigestion. And there again, and they have some practical to, tips yeah. to, to, to... You're back to the small meals again then, you know, small, little and often. Not a big meal, not spicy food, not fatty food, you know, make it bland enough. Potatoes, potatoes are good stable and don't eat, you know, just before you go to bed, you know, that's food to sit in. You, you want to eat, have your meals about two or two to three hours prior to going to bed. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. stops some of that reflux. And, um, you know, we might often feel a bit nauseous. But is there any little helpful tips for nausea? Um, the ginger tea, ginger perhaps? Ginger tea, yeah. Or, or herbal teas, calamine tea. Um, and peppermint, peppermint tea. tea. All of that is, is yeah, quite um, good for beneficial, them. isn't it? Yeah. So that, that leads us on to the next very interesting topic, I think, and that home activities. Particularly now at the moment, trying to maintain um, being uh, uh, not bored or... What, what stimulate, we like stimulate, stimulate. Yeah. So I would say we, we could talk about the home activities. So we have lovely booklets here from the Alzheimer's Society, and they give brilliant tips, don't they, uh, Trish, on, yeah. on home activities, and namely uh, activities inside or outside the home. I suppose if, you're, if every day, if you can get out in the fresh air, if, it would be advisable. You know, uh, if you're not able to walk too far, sit in a chair outside, uh, breathe in the air, take some deep breaths in, hold it, and deep breaths out. And that creates a different circulation once you start breathing uh, well. Uh, listen to the birds singing, look up at the trees, see the flowers, um, generally just feel outside, you know, and if it's cold, wear your coat, don't get a cold, <laughs> but if it's nice and warm, you know, just sit in, sit in the sunshine, let the sun come down your face, it's, it's, it's very good for your well You can water a few plants, you can water a few water plants, plants if, if you're okay, you can break a couple of leaves. Yeah. And, and I know it's, it's um, bedding plants season, if you're able to, you know, bed or pot a few plants and watch them grow, that's all really good for your well-being and your stimulation. And I mean, we have a little chart here that shows the wonderful world of herbs. I mean, you know, you could get... Yeah, you can get a little window box and, and just even do the herbs. Um, the pars ones, parsley. Parsley, garlic, basil. basil. They're all very good for detoxing your body and flushing out your liver. And so stimulating, and stimulating. And stimulating when, you, you, yeah. when you put the herbs into yeah. your food, yeah. you're stimulating um, your appetite yeah. and... So herbs are very good. Flavorful. And you can buy them in the herbs in, in shops, in little pots, even put them on your windowsill inside and, and uh, you know, use them on, in your food. So I, I think, like I was saying to you, Trish, um, the Alzheimer's Society absolutely produce very useful uh, booklets, very useful booklets on home activities, yes. very, very helpful to the carers, engaging in activities at home, and they describe, and this is a kind of a funny one, isn't it, Trish? Engaging activities at home or simply helping people do our routine domestic routine tasks. Domestic things. Now, what kind of tasks would be appropriate, Trish? Well, even even to just mobilise, even getting up and, and clearing the table, you know, um, folding the clothes, clothes, clearing off up the yeah. table, maybe um, uh, washing and drying the dishes. Tidying a drawer. It's all repetitive, but I mean, but it, it's actually kind of satisfactory for somebody to keep them occupied. Yeah. We don't always have to be doing 
games and, and it's stuff. familiar stuff that they're used to they're doing it all their lives you yeah. know make a shopping shop. list yeah. brushing the floor brushing the floor hanging out the washing yeah. perhaps um, keep involved in, in feeding the pets things. there's so many little yeah. tasks and it's keeping people involved and then there's a lovely leaflet on information for families on activities in the home and this brings us to the life story book and this is very good for cognitive um, recall when you describe. So um, look, at, look at family photographs, you know, um, do a bit of colouring, finger art, and arranging flowers, arranging plants. Um, Having a memory box. A memory box. A memory box where you could have soap, like sunlight soap or lavender soap that brings back, it evokes a memory. Mock balls, we all know the distinctive smell yes. of mock balls. Yes. Um, the stiletto shoe, when you went to the dance, you want them to fall <laughs> in the box. Um, seashells. And um, what other things? An apron. Uh, old copies of Ireland's own. Oh, yeah. And the like, sing along, sing songs. There's always lo lovely. Um, Remember, and the old copies of the same song. The same Irish song. The same heart messenger. And. Um, scrubbing brush, wooden skipping ropes, There's, it's endless. And all of these objects bring back and uh, evoke memories. Yeah. That, that's what, it's, that's what, what's, yeah, what it's all about. And I suppose they also say keeping a routine, making lists, writing little notes, all of this is all very helpful. So I think, it's, I think they're it's very, very, very... And we got this lovely little list in tweet, Trish, about um, the hundred stimulating ways of activity suggestions. I thought these were very interesting. Namely, when, when you had your first car, what was the first car you ever owned? And that'll bring you right back. Um, baking bread, folding the towels. Any other activities there now? Your photographs. Uh, cutting out pictures from magazines, something that you, you might like. Um, finishing fav famous sayings. Get up and do a bit of dancing, if you like dancing. Uh, watch this and we'll see together. Arranging some flowers, you know, um, use Play-Doh even to make things with your hands. That all stimulates your hands. Uh, blow bubbles, they say, that's very good for your lungs mm -hmm. to blow bubbles. Oh, yeah. Even with the COVID there, they were saying that was one of the things to increase the capacity in your lungs. Your lungs. It was to blow bubbles. Yeah, or blow down a straw and it increases the capacity of your lungs. Very interesting. Um, so there's, there's a plethora of ideas of things, but it, it, that's a very good... Um, well, I, I have to recommend the outside yeah, for, them, for those suggestions. Yeah. And then moving swiftly on, um, to stay fit, they also say to do your 30 minutes of exercise five times a week. A week. And so, um, and with that, exercise can be anything whatever you have at home and then we just put out a few uh, ideas here like the ball exercises, skittles, walking, walking the dog. Thank you all for watching today. Tune in again for one of our next sessions.